Hi there, and welcome to another Geek Out with Perry on the New Exchange. In the past, we've discussed numerous archiving topics, including what we've done with archiving, e-discovery, and search, and how we might extend this in the future with Federation. Well, the future is now, and we'd love to share some insights into how we've evolved the New Exchange. Hi, Perry. Hi, hey, Anne. So search has changed in the new exchange. So what's new? Well, uh, we're very excited. Uh, we're, uh, the, the big change is we've integrated the fast uh, search technology into exchange. Um, so the, probably the biggest benefit is the users of OA and, uh, and Outlook Online are going to get much faster search results. Okay. Um, uh, the faster search results also allow us to do sort of real-time suggestions um, while you're while you're typing, and also a much richer uh, set of refiners and some UI that automatically pops up as soon as you start typing in in the search well. So overall, we think the uh, the end user experience around uh, search is uh, a lot better. So if search is better, does it change the way we do content indexing? Yes. Um, there are two ways it's uh, improved. One is the, the core indexing technology that's part of FAST is dramatically uh, uh, improved over uh, the technology we've been using in previous releases. Okay. But uh, there's a part of indexing that is less about the, uh, you know, the, the complex work necessary to be able to do a reverse index, but is just the uh, sheer uh, mm, brute force work that needs to be done to uh, get the list of words uh, out of a document, uh, discover its language, uh, and also understand the kind of document you're doing. All right. Okay. So you can sort of think of the the um, the process is um, first you need to have a piece of logic that can understand the different type of documents you've got, like a PDF or a Word document or an Excel document okay. or an email, right? Uh, and these things we call filters, mm -hmm. okay? And their job is to understand a particular document. Okay. So we detect the kind of document, we apply the right kind of filter. Then you do language detection. Okay. Okay. The I filter understands the document and can set uh, uh, the, the language stripped of all the non-language parts to the next step in a, in a standard format. Mm -hmm. Then we have to uh, do language detection on it. And then after you do language detection, then there's an important uh, thing that does is called word breaking. Okay. All right. In some languages, this can be very complex to do because uh, they don't just use straightforward spaces. But even English, there's often complex rules mm -hmm. about uh, what is a word and uh, and in particular, because uh, in search, you don't necessarily always want to just uh, be able to type in, uh, worry about all the endings that could be on a particular word, right? You need to be able to think about there's the core word and the things you put at the beginning and the end. Okay. And you want to be able to separate those things out. Okay. So this takes an awful lot of uh, CPU time to get done on a document because you have to go through and look at all the content. Okay. okay. In previous releases, we would do most of this work in transport because they were in transport. We do a bunch of content-based rules for policy and and other rules, right? Mm -hmm. So they need to understand the content of the message, which means they need to do all of this prior to delivery. So they get the message and they do that, and then they deliver it to three different mailbox servers. Okay. okay, and once we deliver to three mailbox servers, then we replicate to all the replicas. Mm -hmm. All right, and in the old system, we would do this again on each server because each server needed its own index. Okay. So we would uh, go through uh, do the entire process. Through the process, and then if you ever needed to move a mailbox around. Um, or you lost uh, a database, mm -hmm. you would need to rebuild the index, which means you need to re repeat this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you could think of managing, repeating this, you say, you know, times two times every year, you might want to move something, mm -hmm. right? And the messages might live for an average of three years, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, and there's three here, and there's four servers, right? Yep. So that's a, a large number of times that you're going to index it, and you've already done it once. 
Okay. So the big uh, shift that we made was we decided that it was now with the size of, uh, of uh, disc spindles getting larger, that it was uh, uh, much more efficient from a total cost of ownership perspective to persist the endpoint of this word broken document and just the list of words in the document and persist as part of the body of the message in the document. And then you do this, so you do all this calculation once. When it gets delivered, it just gets saved, so you don't have to redo it again. Mm -hmm. HA is going to replicate the content as part of the body of the message, mm -hmm. so that happens. And then MRS, uh, when it moves a mailbox, will also uh, uh, maintain this stuff. And this is a fairly substantial percentage of the total cost of indexing an individual message, is just getting it ready to being able to be analyzed for the reverse indexes in the content index. So overall, we think there's sort of 70 or 100 times reduction in the number of times that a message is going to get uh, um, filtered and word broken. Um, and that's a pretty substantial reduction in the total cost of, uh, of ownership for the system. Oh, great. So instead of doing it all these many times, you're just doing it once. Correct. And keeping At the it. Trans the initial transport point. So the search improvements are really, really great for the end user. So how does this improve our e-discovery story? Well, I think it's one of the great uh, aspects of the the, the approach we've taken, which is all the work that we've put into making fast uh, searches really fast using fast technology uh, is completely leveraged for d discovery scenarios. If you're doing uh, e-discovery queries across a large number of mailboxes, uh, latencies become even more important than uh, just doing searches on a particular folder in your mailbox. Okay. So um, uh, we think one of the really big wins is that we get much faster uh, response on, on queries across the board. Okay. Also, uh, both SharePoint and Exchange have made the bet on fast, uh, integrating fast technology into, into the servers for this release. So um, uh, it's made it very straightforward for us to create a single console that allows us to do discovery across both SharePoint and Exchange from one place mm -hmm. and get your query results in one place. And that also includes all your link data because the, uh, the link team has done all the work to make sure that there's a very straightforward uh, uh, process to set it up so that all your link content gets archived in exchange. So now, uh, at the end of the day, you have one place to do your queries, you get it back fast and quickly, and get a full result set. And you don't have to manage multiple systems to do this. The fact that you have Exchange and SharePoint deployed and Link deployed automatically means you've got a great uh, e-discovery and uh, compliance system at your, at, at your disposal. Okay, so when you're doing a query in the eDiscovery Center for Exchange and for SharePoint, all that data stays within Exchange and stays within SharePoint, correct? Correct. So do you have to put things on hold to be able to do searches across this, or how does that work? Right. So in previous releases, hold was mostly restricted to be sort of mailbox-wide. If you got in a situation in which you needed uh, uh, to worry about uh, being absolutely sure about retention because of uh, a legal hold situation, you would place a whole mailbox on. You could do that for a period of time, but the granularity was a mailbox. Um, one of the great things that's coming with this release is uh, sort of integrating the queries that we're doing uh, through FAST and enabling uh, a much more granular uh, uh, hold experience in something that we call uh, query-based hold. So if you do a query, you can actually set a policy so that, that any items that match that query mm -hmm. get retained for the period of time that you would like. Okay, uh -huh. So it's time-based, but it's also granular to the sense that only the items that, that match a particular legal matter get retained. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, uh, I think that's a, a much better way of making sure that the stuff that needs to be retained that is retained without retaining a lot of things that you don't want to retain. Okay, so now I can do a query and I can do it across Exchange and if I have SharePoint, across SharePoint and Link and the data stays in place. That's correct. You don't have to move the data out and you don't have to build new systems. It's all there. It's all managed. You've got the high availability system uh, providing you with uh, the confidence that the data is going to be there at the end of the day. And you're exercising the system on a regular basis. You have a lot of confidence that the system's working. Thanks, Perry. And thanks for watching. We hope customers are going to love managing e-discovery across Exchange, SharePoint, and Link from a single interface. Let us know if you have questions for Perry and keep on watching.